The most common thing people say to others with mental illness is, it's okay not to be okay. But so many people need to hear that it's okay to be okay too. Our culture seems fixated on the melancholic and tragic, often turning sadness into something almost poetic. In a world that increasingly prizes happiness and success, many of us find ourselves drawn to the allure of sadness. We romanticize our melancholy, capturing it in songs, films, and social media posts that depict the beauty in our struggles. But what lies beneath this tendency, and how does it affect us? The Cultural Allure of Sadness In pop culture, sadness is often depicted as profound and meaningful. Think of the tragic backstories of many beloved characters. Harry Potter's loss of his parents, Katniss Everdeen's struggle against the Capitol, the heartbreaking deaths of Yuji's loved ones, much like Tanjiro with his siblings. Tragedy propels these stories forward, making us more invested in their characters. It's almost as if we crave sadness, agony, and tragedy. Romanticizing misery means seeing sadness as a beautiful, profound state of being. We often idealize our struggles through heartbreak songs, tear-jerking movies, and melancholic quotes, making sadness feel acceptable, even desirable. However, there's a fine line between romanticizing and accepting our emotions. Accepting sadness means acknowledging our feelings without judgment and allowing ourselves to process them healthily. A significant aspect of this cultural allure is the tortured artist trope. This narrative suggests that great art requires great suffering, leading to the romanticization of sadness and mental illness. Historical and contemporary figures like Vincent van Gogh, Sylvia Plath, and Kurt Cobain are often celebrated not only for their artistic genius, but also for their struggles with mental illness and emotional pain. Artists such as Mitski, Billie Eilish, and Lana Del Rey, often stereotyped for their melancholic music, have become some of the most acclaimed musicians of recent years. Social media amplifies this by promoting the idea that sharing our sadness is genuine and relatable. Platforms like Instagram and TikTok are rife with posts that glamorize sadness, often through beautifully edited videos or aesthetically pleasing photos paired with melancholic quotes. This trend extends to nostalgia, where we reminisce about past pains and heartbreaks, finding a strange comfort in our memories of suffering. Psychological Underpinnings Nietzsche once said, Profound suffering makes noble, it separates. During adolescence, we all grapple with questions of identity. Who am I? What do I value? How do others see me? Psychologically, exploring sadness as a way to form our identity connects with Eric Erikson's stages of psychosocial development. Erikson believed that during adolescence, we face the challenge of identity versus role confusion. This means we try to figure out who we are while dealing with pressures from society and our own desires. For some, embracing sadness or suffering can feel like asserting a unique identity, a departure from societal norms that push constant positivity and surface-level happiness. On the other hand, Viktor Frankl's Logotherapy, which emphasizes finding meaning in suffering, suggests that people naturally seek significance in their pain. This search for meaning can become a philosophical journey, where sadness is seen as a pathway to deeper understanding and personal growth. We might also romanticize our suffering because we enjoy consuming sad media that allows us to safely explore feelings that would otherwise be painful and uncomfortable for us in real life. When we know something is only fictional, it doesn't create a sense of anxiety within us. We live in our own feelings through these experiences of sadness depicted in works of art. But it's crucial to differentiate between romanticized sadness and clinical depression. While the former can be a temporary emotional state we choose to indulge in, the latter is a serious mental health condition requiring professional intervention. Romanticized sadness often overlooks the debilitating aspects of clinical depression, such as constant feelings of hopelessness and worthlessness, lack of energy and motivation, sleep and appetite disturbances, and even suicidal thoughts and self-harm. The Benefits of Embracing Sadness There are undeniable benefits to embracing sadness. For example, by acknowledging and experiencing our sadness, we can better understand ourselves and our reactions to the world around us. This process can lead to personal growth and a more nuanced understanding of happiness. Shared experiences of sadness also create bonds and foster empathy. We find authenticity and vulnerability appealing, as they break down superficial barriers and allow for genuine connections. Romanticizing sadness can also be seen as a form of resistance against a culture that demands constant positivity. It gives us permission to be real and imperfect rejecting the unrealistic standards of perpetual happiness. 
Potential Downsides of Romanticization Despite the benefits, there are significant downsides to romanticizing sadness. For instance, it can sometimes lead to unhealthy coping mechanisms, where individuals may seek out or prolong their suffering to fit a certain narrative. Mainstream media surrounding mental illness that glamorizes depression and anxiety can send the message that these conditions are desirable or even fashionable. The glorification of sadness is the exact opposite of representation. It can trivialize real mental health struggles and prevent people from seeking the help they need. Also, constantly focusing on sadness can prevent people from experiencing the full range of emotions. It can create a self-fulfilling prophecy where individuals feel trapped in a cycle of melancholy, unable to move forward and find joy. Practical Tips for a Balanced Emotional Life To appreciate the value of all emotions without getting stuck in sadness, consider these practical psychology-backed tips. Acknowledge all emotions. Remember Riley from Inside Out? Recognize that both happiness and sadness are natural parts of life. Neither should be suppressed or overly glorified. Practice self-care. Find activities that bring you joy and fulfillment, or find ways to self-soothe during times of emotional distress, like meditating, working out, or spending time with loved ones. Engage in self-care routines that nurture your mental, physical, and social well-being. Practice emotional awareness. Develop a habit of turning into your emotions without judgment. Mindfulness techniques, such as meditation or journaling, can help you become more aware of your emotional state without getting lost in it. Set boundaries with media. Be mindful of how media, including social platforms and entertainment, influences your emotional landscape. Limit exposure to content that glorifies sadness or perpetuates unrealistic emotional expectations. Practice gratitude. Regularly reflect on things you appreciate in your life. Gratitude can shift your focus from perceived efficiencies to the positives, fostering a more balanced perspective. Seek professional help. If you find yourself struggling with persistent sadness, don't hesitate to seek help from a mental health professional. By understanding the reasons behind our tendency to romanticize sadness and learning to embrace a balanced emotional life, we can foster a healthier relationship with our emotions. Remember, Sometimes, pain is not poetic. It's just pain. It's okay to be okay. So, did this video emotionally resonate with you? Have you ever romanticized your misery? What steps will you take today to embrace a more balanced emotional perspective in your life? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video and want to learn more, click here to watch 5 Signs You Have Emotional Trauma and How to Heal. And if you struggle to let go of hatred, watch this. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe before you go. Thanks for watching.